My great-great-grandfather, James Alexander Wilson, came over with his two brothers from Enniskillen, Ireland, and they actually rented this piece of land right here. Eventually they were able to buy, and it started right here in Lexington, Mass. Wilson Farm was founded in 1884, owned and operated by family ever since. It's incredible, it really is, and it means a lot to all of us. General Manager Lauren Wilson is part of the fifth generation to maintain this lasting legacy. These are so cool. She left her job as a lawyer two years ago to work alongside family, including her father, Scott. We have these because Lauren saw them last year and loved them. So those are pumpkins that are actually grown in a Frankenstein mold. Right now we're all about pumpkins. And there are plenty to choose from, 45 varieties in fact. Everyone buys a field pumpkin. While that classic may be the most popular, its conventional name pales in comparison to some of the other gourds. You have 40 Goblin, you'll have a cheese pumpkin, my favorite Cinderella, it runs the gamut. There's also Peanut, Flatso, and Monsta Pumpkins. But it's the more understated varieties that fill the farm's famed pumpkin wall. It takes our crew a full day. It took them eight hours. There are 190 apple boxes put up that they individually screwed into the wall, and then about 260 pumpkins and gourds. A feast for fall eyes, and just one of many traditions of which the Wilson family is so proud. I love that, you know, it's something that my grandfather did. I grew up here, there was never a doubt in my mind that I wanted to follow in my dad's footsteps. It's really important to us that it remains a farm and that we remain true to our roots. So sometimes you choose the pumpkin, sometimes the pumpkin chooses you. I mean, the craftsmanship and the intricacy of it when you see it up close is really kind of amazing. It's really exciting, frankly, as a, as a style of art to do. George Nicolopoulos is passionate about pumpkins. He's been using them as his canvas for nearly two decades at the Jack-O-Lantern Spectacular. We were the first people to ever do this. Held at the Roger Williams Park Zoo in Providence, Rhode Island, the annual show features 5,000 pumpkins transformed into works of art. When you invent a genre, you're always trying to figure out how to do something different, how to do something better. John Reckner is the pumpkin pioneer responsible for creating this show more than 30 years ago. 1987, went to northern Vermont and saw a mountainside exhibit of like 500 pumpkins. And I was just awestruck. And coming back to Oxford, Massachusetts, I'm taking my dogs for a walk through the woods and a light bulb just goes off. After his epiphany, Reckner formed his own production company, Passion for Pumpkins, and spent all his vacation days from his job at the Postal Service turning gourds into art. Essentially, it's those three elements, illuminated artwork, background music, and highlighting some of the beauty of the natural environment. This year's theme celebrates 75 years of television, which covers a lot of ground. But finding the right characters isn't the biggest challenge. It's the battle against time. We have spent forever trying to figure out how to make these last. And we've come up with a few techniques. We hollow them out and we put these industrial fans on them and it, it kind of cures them. Once a pumpkin is prepped, the clock starts and it's turned into either a jack-o'-lantern or an intricate pumpkin. Some might call it etching, they're scratching, sanding, a variety of techniques that we use to create different depths and different textures. Most artists use oil-based markers. So you can use your finger, right, and create some gray. This is a bobby pin that's been bent in half and sharpened. That's for getting really fine lines. The more flesh that I remove, the more light will shine through. Something like this takes how long? I think the average is between six, about six to eight hours. Wow. In the interest of time, we opted for a more entry-level lesson. I am not blessed with a lot of artistic ability. Um, but you say, I can't make a mistake. Like, can't. every pumpkin's beautiful. Every pumpkin is beautiful, and every pumpkin has its place in the world. Okay. Some of them go really far back, <laughs> and some are right in front. I like those wild, uh, the wild smiles. Uh, weird, yeah, like that. Throw some teeth in there. This guy needs some dental work. Not everyone connects with every pumpkin, 
but everyone will connect with some. <laughs> okay, you are good at so many things. We might gonna take some practice on that one, but that amazing Chronicle pumpkin mm -hmm. that did make its way back to the office. That came here. Mine stayed at the show. Yes. It's in the show. I, it's, it is. It was good. Probably in the way, way back. <laughs> one interesting note: some of the more intricate pumpkins they have to be replaced four times during the 30 day show because if the weather is warm as it has been, they'll decay over that time. So they will redo them wow. over and over and over again. It's very labor intensive. Didn't realize it was That's quite that impressive. labor intensive. Yeah. Wow. Well, you would know. All right. <laughs>